Hello, my stamping friends. This is Renee Novak at BlessedByCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States, and I am here today with another Make It Monday tutorial. Today we are going to create some gift bags using our designer series paper. I don't know about you, but I have had a lot of gifts to give in this uh, spring season with Mother's Day and graduation and birthdays. So I thought it would be fun if we could turn our 12 by 12 and our 6 by 6 DSP paper into um, a gift bag. So that's what we're going to do today. You're going to need limited number of supplies. We need our paper snips. We're going to need some liquid glue or if you prefer tear and tape and um, if you want to put a ribbon on your bag you're going to need ribbon you're going to need a piece of um, two pieces of 12 by 12 designer series paper or if you prefer a smaller bag six by six so this bag here that I created is using a 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper and I will have all the measurements on my blog but um, basically the design is going to be the same whether you use a 12 by 12 or cut it down to a 10 by 10 which is the medium bag and of course I created a little tag using my leftover pieces that I cut off and you'll see that in a minute when we start on our smaller bag and for the piece that I cut off to um, make our bag for this one I created this teeny tiny little box um, or actually as a little bag so you could put a little um, ribbon to or linen thread something tiny for this one so that's using the leftovers and I'll you'll know exactly what I mean in a second you're gonna need your scoring tool and we're going to start today by making a smaller bag we're going to use two pieces of designer series paper that measure six by six and conveniently we can purchase these in packs that come six by six and so you'll need to decide which side you want out and which side you want your accent piece. So for this one, I had the dots as my main bag and the bees as my accent. And for the sweet strawberries, I had the strawberries and then the accent was the plaid. If you have a pattern paper, you'll want to make sure that you measure, know where your top is. Um, because that will be important for you so that your design's not going upside down. Today, it doesn't matter because both of these um, patterns go both ways. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I'm going to start with the 6x6. Six six, and you want to put it all the way up into the corner of your scoring tool. And for this one, we're going to score on three sides all the same. And then the top is going to be different which is why you need to know where your top is if you have a patterned specific paper so we're going to go ahead and score at one and a half and then we're going to rotate and we're going to score at one and a half and then we're going to rotate and score at one and a half and then for the top piece we're going to score it at three-fourths of an inch Okay, and then we're going to bring our other piece of design a series paper in that is exactly the same. Put it up in the corner and score it one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, and then three fourths. Now, each bag, depending on how big it is, that will determine where you score. On the 12 by 12 you're going to score three sides at three inches and the top at one and a half and on the medium size bag that I uh, created this one it started with a 10 by 10 piece of paper and you score it two and a half on three sides and one and a quarter at the top. So all of the directions for each bag is exactly the same. So you want to grab your bone folder you just want to really you just want to burnish all of your score lines on both sheets of your paper okay. 
And there you have, that's what you will have. So for actually creating the design of the box, you're going to want to remove two squares. Now this is the same if you're doing the bigger bag or a smaller bag. One of the designer series paper, you want to remove two of the bottom squares. And you want to use your paper snips or a nice scissors because you do want to try to cut the best that you can so that they go together. And so for then the other piece, you want to locate your top and you want to cut these squares across on the horizontal plane. You don't want to cut the whole square out. Just go horizontal with the top. So these are going to fold in like this. And this is going to fit here. And we're going to fold up and create our bag. So I see on this one where I didn't quite cut very well, as you can see when it, see how there's that little lip there. So I'm going to come back and kind of make that nice and, because that will matter when you put the bag together. You want them to be squared. Okay. All right. So I am going to have the, the, the more checkered pattern, my dominant pattern. And so I want to line these up and this piece right here will go down and you'll fold up to make your bag. Now I found it easier for me to go ahead and just kind of glue this pad, this, this piece down here. It just kind of made it a little easier for me. Just a little liquid glue along there and I bone folded it just to get it nice and it, it just looks a little bit more professional, your finished product, because you don't have those um, little flaps sticking up. They're kind of adhered, so just adhere them down. I love the liquid glue because it gives you an opportunity for it to dry and you have a little bit of a wiggle room. So what we're going to want to do now is just put some glue on this bottom portion. And you're going to want to kind of line it up with this and want to stick it down. And this is where it's important to have those pieces cut. And so I kind of just fold this in and burnish it again in case my cut isn't quite perfect because this will determine the side of your bag. So you have a little bit of an opportunity there to square it up. And you can see that I didn't cut it very straight because when I folded it over, it's kind of sticking up. So then this is going to fold. And again, I'm just going to burnish it a little bit. And you'll, the paper is thick. Designer series paper from Stampin' Up! is awesome. So it's, it's heavier. And so depending on the card, um, papers that you are using or if you're going to stamp and use cardstock, then it's a little, even a little thicker than that. Okay, so there you have the makings. You can see it starting. Now the next thing that I like to do is determine what's going to be my back so that both of my pieces are going to the back when I'm gluing them. I don't want one coming to the front and one coming to the back. So I just kind of pick a side, and then once you decide that, just go ahead and the glue is going to go on these flaps here. You're just going to put some glue down. And this is where it's kind of important to make sure that it's really squared in there. And like I said, with the liquid glue, you do have a little bit of wiggle room. But you want to kind of leave it on the table, something solid, so that you don't have a cattywampus bag. See, it's coming together. See how easy that is. Then we're just going to apply a little more liquid glue on both of these side panels. And I'm just going to fold those up. And I really want to stay focused on the top. So if I get my top squared away, then the bottom will just fall right into place. And again, on this side, get the top. Because that's what people will see when you give them the gift bag. 
And there you have it. That is a very simple, small gift bag using a six by six piece of designer series paper. And um, again, the 12 by 12 is the same. You'll score it and then you'll cut off two of the squares. And those two cut off squares is where I got the pieces to create the smaller bag. And then on this one, the same concept, you're going to cut two of those squares. And I use the designer series paper from those squares to create the tag that goes on this bag. When you get down smaller and smaller, it's harder because these are the two pieces I cut. So perhaps you could, you know, maybe cut one on the diagonal and then try to... Um, create a tag to go on the outside using some whisper white or some coordinating. If you want to do a ribbon, like I did a ribbon here through the tie, you just punch a couple holes. You want to thread your ribbon through and then tie a knot so that it doesn't come back through. You can see that, tying the knot at the end. And this one I'm just going to kind of leave this, this with no ribbon. And then this one I might put my ribbon on the ends. So you can also put your holes on the side and bring your ribbon up front. And that way you would just need one piece of ribbon. So there you have it. That is our Make It Monday tutorial on how to turn designer series paper into a cute gift bag. I hope you have fun creating and join me next Monday for another Make It Monday tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be blessed.